Frances Green was a little old lady who lived in South San Francisco, and she contributed some modest amount to the Republican Party. I believe it was 1984, the year the president was reelected, and she received in the mail an invitation to the inauguration. And of course, it was one of those suitable for framing, a kind of token of thanks for the contribution she had made. But she thought it was a real invitation to the inauguration. She got on a train and she went to Washington and she presented herself at the White House. And there was a, a stir at the gates because the Secret, Secret Service is very good. If you look like an intruder, they know how to stop you. But if you're a sweet little old lady, there it was hard. What do you do with this? And some couple of staff members going in to the White House saw this and asked what was up and got told the story. And so the word goes, begins circulating in the White House and it reaches the president. And, uh, and the president just said, <clears throat> that's ridiculous, 30 years ago. But it shows what kind of guy he was. He just said, go find her. And so they found Frances Green and brought her in, and he spent 20 minutes chatting with her in the Oval Office as if she were the Queen of England. Ronald Reagan and Frances Green. What it meant to work for Ronald Reagan was to see someone, I was young, but every day I would think to myself, I'd like to be like that. The sense of comfort within himself, the graciousness, the way he was able to put everyone at ease. I can't remember a single meeting in the Oval Office that didn't begin with a joke or a story or something with the President just checking around to make sure everybody was at ease. And so it was a kind of, um, I guess the lasting impression of Ronald Reagan for me is a kind of lightness of touch, a kind of gracefulness.